Well, I got a little follow-up video. Uh, what I did was I replaced the crank on the side of my mill with this uh, drill and uh, made a little adapter for it. So I uh, can jack this thing up and down without cranking it. And I got the same setup as before. The uh, dial indicator on the spindle. So what I'm going to do is uh, lower it down, tighten it up. Hopefully you will see that the thing stays exactly on zero. So let me get the camera on the tripod and get it on a close up of the dial indicator. And hopefully We'll demo this thing. Okay, so I got the head locked up right now. I got the indicator on the spindle. It's zeroed out. I'm gonna unlock it. Move the head down. I'd say that's pretty accurate. Jack it back up. I think I pulled it off a little there. Gotta be careful how you tighten this up because you, you know, you can bend the rod. It's not infinitely rigid, but uh, that's not too bad, really. It's not a knee mill or anything, you know. Move it halfway so it happens. Can't complain about that really. Um, so that's it, that's, it's done. I don't know if I'm going to leave this drill on here. <clears throat> I, um, I'm actually thinking of, uh, putting a dedicated motor on there, because, uh, one of the dangers of having this drill is that uh, there's no limit stops. I mean, obviously, when it hits the bottom, it stops, but the problem arises. Let me get the camera here and show you the little issue I'm having. When the head comes up, this will eventually hit this arm. So what I was going to do is throw some limit switches on this uh, rail just to stop the motor when it, uh, when it hit the limits there so it didn't do any damage if I wasn't paying attention. 
Um, you know, if I did that, I would, you know, obviously not be using the drill because I don't want to hack up my drill. So, um, I do have another derelict DeWalt drill with defunct batteries in it. But I'm not too crazy about the drill idea. I may um, get a worm drive right angle gear motor and just mount it up here. And, uh, you know, direct couple it to the shaft. Or maybe not direct, but, um, you know, with an old ham coupling or something like that. Um, you know, because it's kind of hard to control the speed of this drill. I mean, you could see how fast that thing was moving when I gunned it. It's uh, supposed to be 750 RPM on the low speed. With this kind of load on it, it's probably more like 600, maybe 500 RPM. And that's too fast. I'm thinking like 250 is probably as fast as you'd ever want this uh, shaft turn and I don't know what the ratio is between that and this uh, this rack gear but uh, you know I'm guessing on you know if this thing's running at 600 you probably want like 250 for the speed max because uh, you know there's no need to have, have to go any faster than that so uh, I gotta think about that for a while because his gear motors ain't cheap. So there's the mighty wrong foo in all its glory. Ready to make chips. And I did do one other test, I didn't film it, but uh, I have this really long drill bit. So what I did is um just took a piece of aluminum, stuck it in the vise. And then um, I used a center drill, a short center drill, to you know put a start hole in there. And I put the real long drill bit in and jacked the head way up. Supposedly it would be, remain concentric, and it did. But the idea was, is even if it wasn't concentric, the long drill would follow the uh, starter hole and flex a little bit to... Uh, give me a reference and after I drill that hole I took a, an end mill real short thing stuck it in there same diameter as the drill jacked the head way down and put the end mill in the hole and it didn't scrape the sides and when I pulled it out it didn't have any rims or ridges or anything in there so I would say that uh, concentricity is pretty good on this thing too because I jacked it pretty much the entire distance there. The drill I had is, was a foot long and then the, mill I, the end mill I had was sticking out maybe two inches at the most so I jacked the head up and down pretty far. So I'm pretty confident that um, this is going to be accurate. Um, you know, I've done a lot of testing where I haven't been looking at the indicator just to make sure, you know, <clears throat> you do have to be careful when you tighten in these bolts because before you tighten the head, you can pull it off a couple of thou. What I found is you do not try to tighten them like this where you're pulling the head sideways you tighten them like this where you're pulling the head you know up or down and then you don't affect the rotation of it and you know gets tight once it's tight it's you know it's good so you know that's the only limitation that I can see with this is that this bar right here even though it's it's 25 millimeters thick and it's supposedly hardened it does have some flex to it and um, that translates to about two thousandths, you know, movement back and forth in the spindle, you know, way off here from from the column. If you pull it, if you don't apply force to it, 
you know, uh, like when I was jacking the head up and down, I did not have the drill vertical like this because then I would be pulling it and trying to turn the head. What I had was the, uh, was the drill like this so that when I applied, you know, when the torque, when I had to counter the torque of the thing turning, it was either putting a force up or down on the head. So that's what I, you know, have learned about this thing. You, you, you can't torque the head when the bolts are loose because you can pull it off center. But a one inch bar is pretty rigid. So, you know, if you're careful, you can get it to look like this all the time. Okay, that's enough talking on this subject. Now I gotta start making some chips. Thanks for watching.